Okay, so we've now talked about uh, some of the basics of using the Python language. Uh, I've assumed that, that you have a background in programming, including object-oriented programming at this point. And the, the idea here was to show you some of the, uh, the ways of handling uh, coding and, and in particular coding for objects in the Pythonic way. Um, I, I've only given you enough to essentially be dangerous at this point. Uh, but uh, I encourage you uh, to try lots of things out and uh, to actually start reading some of the reference material that's available for Python. But let's talk a little bit about uh, best practices for Python uh, before we're done here. Uh, Python as a scripting language really does bring a lot of power uh, to the table. So, so in particular, you don't have to explicitly declare variable types. Type checking is done in a lazy way. It happens at, at runtime. So this can be an, a good thing, and it can also get you into uh, trouble, especially if you start switching the types of uh, variables that are declared within your code. So that's something that you want to, uh, to watch out for as you move forward. One of the other things that we get out of the scripting language property is that we can type in lines of code and, and execute them immediately and, and get some results back and see to see what happens. This allows us, this set of properties will, uh, allow us to very quickly put together uh, bits of code to test ideas out uh, with, without having to do a, a lot of the, the, the heavy lifting of going through compilation steps and organizing very complicated uh, code implementations. So there's a lot of power uh, to be had there. Uh, however, as you start to move forward in, in developing more comprehensive solutions, we want to start to build abstraction in, into our code. And this is where our functions and our object classes uh, come into play. So, th so these are mechanisms that allow us to build um, modular and reusable blocks of code. Th this makes it easier for us to uh, to code uh, big uh, solutions, and it helps us to to uh, more easily uh, maintain code as as we start to use it in lots of different situations. So, so I encourage you. Uh, although the the scripting uh, aspect is really uh, useful, I encourage you that once you start to develop a solution that is uh, th th that is more complete, more solid, that you then begin to push that implementation out into a function or into an object class. Uh, this is going to make it easier for you as you move forward uh, to apply the code that you've implemented in uh, new ways. Global variables. I've, I've shown you some of the uh, mechanisms for using global variables. Uh, uh, they, they make it very easy for us to, say, declare some sort of a high-level context in which our code uh, might be executing in. So we might have a path to a data, data set that we're referencing right now that we might want to change at, at various uh, times, depending upon what experiment we're actually uh, conducting. Uh, however, what we learn even back into the 1960s is that global variables can be very dangerous things. So, so as you're implementing your code, uh, I encourage you to not explicitly reference global variables inside of your functions or class instance methods. Uh, instead, uh, what, I, what I suggest you do is uh, you might be declaring global variables, but uh, rather than explicitly referencing them inside of your functions, you actually pass the values of those global variables uh, to your functions and class methods. And this way, uh, you'll end up with an implementation that's a lot easier to uh, maintain it, and in particular to, to track what's happening with those particular variables. Finally, there are lots of code examples out there on the net. These are can be useful references for, for understanding uh, how to solve particular uh, problems. Uh, the, the challenge, th though, is that a lot of the examples that sit out there are really poor example of proper programming techniques. 
So, uh, so, so things that you'll see out there on the net are things like uh, just raw scripting uh, code where, where no functions or classes are used. Uh, you'll also see lots of examples of ugly use of uh, especially global variables. And I, I encourage you to, to certainly look out on the net for examples of code, but uh, I encourage you not to just blindly go out and copy bits of code to solve uh, problems, especially for, for this class, you should definitely not be doing that. Uh, so, so as you're looking out at, at the code examples and bringing those ideas into your own code, make sure that you're working to try to understand how the, how the code actually works. Uh, and and also strive to develop uh, quality code. So this is code that should be uh, easy to understand. You should be writing some documentation uh, as you go as well, so that when you come back a day later or a week later to your code, you, you can remember easily uh, what that code is supposed to be doing and how it's doing it. So those are a few thoughts on best practices. We'll talk about more as we go and, and I'll certainly uh, be trying to uh, demonstrate those best practices to you uh, in my examples.